Hi, my name is Michael Anderson. Welcome back to another Street Kills Video Chronicle segment. This segment, we're going to be talking about how to file fit your piston rings properly using the uh, Proform electronic filing tool. I believe that's, uh, let's see, part number, where'd I go? Ooh, I don't know the part number, but you'll see it. You'll, you'll be able to look it up. Um, first thing you got to do, you always don't guess. There's a lot of uh, engine builders that are like, oh, you know, I've been doing this for years and I know the ring gap. I know what I should do. This is a boosted sand rail engine. It's an LS3. Uh, we have a stroker kit. Um, it's bored out uh, five thousandths because the pistons come standard. Then you all, the pistons are always plus five, so you, you got to hone it in to the piston size. Then you call the piston manufacturer. You get, you know, what gap they want on the rings for their pistons. So the this specific ring gap is 24 thousandths for the top ring and 18 thousandths for the bottom. He's running, uh, he's running, I believe it's a twin turbo setup. So what we do is we get our rings, always do the top first, because if you mess up a little bit on a top ring, you're all right. But if you mess up on an oil ring, you're gonna have a lot of oil blow by. So what we do is, we take and we put the ring, the, the base of the piston together, okay, for the top rings. Then we'll go over to our, our ring groove machine. We have, uh, we spec the rings out. We found out that each one of the rings is 20 thousandths um, larger. So we need to shave 20 thousandths off to get to zero. Then we need to go 24 to get to our gap. So on the rings, you wanna actually make sure that you're square You'll probably have to reset your tool from where the factory had it. But you want to make sure your, your rings are square. You don't want your ring coming at an angle. Tighten it down. Push it forward. If you notice our dial is off, loosen up your dial. Spin it to zero. Pretty easy. Mess with it a little bit. Make sure you're right on about zero. Flip your machine on. We were, we're going to go 20 thousandths, which is 80 or the red 20. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Five. 10. 15. 12 or 20. Now you shut it off. I do recommend wearing safety glasses for this because you can get you can get a piece in your eye. But slide it forward. We went about 82, which is 22 thousandths. Pretty that's fine. Take your piston ring, slide it off, deburr the bottom of it. You can usually do that with your finger. Take your piston out. Hold your piston. Make sure it says top because we're doing it the way it should go in. Take your piston, very gently slide it down to the top ring to get zero. See that? It's a little too tight. So we know it needs to take, we need to take a little bit more off to get to 20. So what we're gonna do, gonna jump back over here. And if you, this thing will get away from you really quick. You can shave the crap out of a ring and not even know how far you're going. Set it flat. We're just going to bump it. That was probably too much to be dead on, but we're okay. Slide it back in. Take your piston. As your sliding gauge, when you're doing the piston, make sure the oil ring supports on the sides are overlapping a little bit so you get it nice and flush in there. Nice and flush, okay? If you notice, that's real close to dead, dead on. It's real close to touching each other, okay? We have probably 0 0.002, 0 0.003 in there. So now we know we're real close to where we need to be. So we're gonna take our ring. Now this is the crucial set. The first one was to get it close. If you go a touch over, it's fine. We get our ring, set it back up flat. It's not flat. It's crucial to get it flat. There we go. Tighten your clamp down good. 
readjust your gauge to zero right there money fire up your bad boy five ten fifteen Twenty and a bump. Just a baby bump. We'll show you what that baby bump did. Put it at about twenty-two. We're about zero zero three. We're gonna give it a touch bump. We're zero zero two zero zero three in there. Look at that. Right at twenty-four, which is where we need to be. So we should be real close. Better be a touch under than a touch over. But you know, even if you're a touch over, you're you're within uh, just a, a thousand. You should be good. Get your ring down in there. Take your twenty-four. Give her a test run. That's a beautiful tight twenty-four. So, I would feel comfortable with that. If you take it like this, you can get a little bit better. See, nice tight 24. It's perfect. The top ring is done. Now you do the same thing with the bottom ring. It's no different, except for you want to slide the ring down a little bit deeper in the hole to make sure that your bottom ring, you know, it's about where it lives. A little bit deeper in the hole. You should be groovy. You should have everything you need set your, uh, to set your gaps on your piston rings. You know, now you just got to install your pistons and you have your, your bottom end of your rotating assembly. Thanks for stopping by and checking out uh, how to set the gap on your rings. Uh, it's very crucial on super high performance builds. You want to get it really close. This sucker is going to have about a thousand horsepower with the turbos. So, and that's on low boost, you know, that's like 10 pounds of boost. So the ring gap on this, we talked to the manufacturer. He said that's safe up to 15 pounds. After 15 pounds, we, we have to call them back. And, and go over everything again. So, once again, thank you for stopping by and checking out uh, Street Kills Video Chronicles, how to file fit your piston rigs. Have a great day, guys.